Hello friends, in our last few videos, we were defining and analyzing some important functions. In this video, we will define and analyze a new interesting function which is known as the modulus function. So without wasting a second, let's start learning about modulus function. To understand the modulus function, let's consider the real numbered line. Now let's say we are at the point 0 and we want to reach the point 5 on the number line. What will we do? We simply move a distance of 5 units towards right and then reach the point 5 on the number line. At this time, if you want to reach the point minus 5 from 0, then we move the same distance of 5 units but in the opposite direction. So, the important point here to note is, although we reached two different points 5 and minus 5, the distance we travel to reach them from the origin is the same which is 5 units. This distance of 5 units is known as the absolute value of both 5 and minus 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5 since it is at a distance of 5 units from 0. The absolute value of minus 5 is also 5 since it is at a distance of 5 units from 0. So from this, we can conclude that the absolute value of 2.5 is 2.5 itself and the absolute value of minus 2.5 is also 2.5. And now with this concept as the basis, let's try to design a function. And now the speciality of this function is it accepts the inputs and then the outputs will be the absolute values of the inputs. For example, if the input is 10.2, then the output will be the absolute value of 10.2, which is 10.2 itself. Now, if the input is minus 5.8, then the output will be the absolute value of minus 5.8, which is 5.8. Let's try to analyze the algebra of this function. If the input is a positive number, then the output is also the same positive number. But if the input is a negative number, then the output is a positive number which has the same value as that of the input negative number and this implies that the output number is minus 1 multiplied by the input negative number. So for example, if the input is minus 100, then the output is minus 1 multiplied by minus 100 which is 100. So the modulus function as soon as it accepts the input x, first it checks whether the input is a positive number or a negative number. If the input x is a positive number, then the output will be the same number which is x. On the other hand, if the input number x is a negative number, then the output will be minus 1 multiplied by x which is nothing but minus x. Now what if the input is 0? When the input is 0, the output is simply 0. So to summarize this, the modulus function f of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and the modulus function f of x is equal to minus x if x is less than 0. And the modulus function is represented like this, which is x between two lines. As we have understood the definition of the modulus function, let's try to find the domain of the modulus function. That is, all the input values for which the modulus function is defined. Can the modulus function accept positive real numbers? Yes, of course it can accept positive real numbers. Can it accept negative real numbers? Yes, it can accept negative real numbers as well 
and finally the modulus function can accept zero as well so from this we can conclude that the modulus function is defined for the set of all real numbers which implies that the domain of the modulus function is the set of all real numbers and now to find the range of the modulus function we have to find all the possible output values so we have the input values here and we substitute them in the function and we get the output values when the input is zero the output will also be zero and for all the inputs other than zero the outputs will always be a positive number whether the input is a positive number or a negative number so from this we can conclude that the output numbers from the modulus function are always non negative numbers therefore the range of the modulus function is the interval 0 comma infinity closed at 0 so we concluded that the domain of the modulus function is the set of real numbers and the range of the modulus function is the interval 0 comma infinity closed at 0 now keeping these things in mind let's try to draw the graph of the modulus function as we know the input values are on the x axis and the output values are on the y axis so in the function f of x equals to modulus of x we substitute some input values and we get the respective output values for the input of 0 the output will be clearly 0 so the point we have to plot is 0 comma 0 which is nothing but origin now for the inputs of both minus 1 and 1 the output is always 1 since we know that modulus of minus 1 is 1 as well as modulus of 1 is also 1 so the points we will be plotting are 1 comma 1 and minus 1 comma 1 similarly for the inputs of minus 2 and 2 the output is only 2 which implies that the points that we will be plotting are 2 comma 2 and minus 2 comma 2 now this pattern repeats for all the input values and finally if we collect the points that we got we get the graph of the modulus function and we can see that the graph of the modulus function is in the shape of the letter v and now the graph of the modulus function is clearly symmetrical with respect to y axis and we know that the graphs of even functions are symmetrical with respect to y axis and so we can conclude that the modulus function is an even function we also can conclude that from the definition of the modulus function since we know the fact that modulus of x is clearly equal to modulus of minus x and we know that if f of x is equal to f of minus x then the function f of x is an even function and now let us compare the graphs of the identity function and the modulus function can we form the graph of the modulus function from the graph of the identity function if you observe carefully the graphs of both these functions are the same on the right side of the y axis now to form the graph of the modulus function from the graph of the identity function on the left side of the y axis we simply have to take the mirror image of the identity function's graph with respect to the x axis by doing this we are changing the negative output values into the positive output values since the modulus function outputs only positive real numbers now similarly if the graph of any function is given to us and if you are asked to draw the graph of the modulus of that function then we simply take the mirror image of the part of the graph which is below the x axis with respect to the x axis so if this is the graph of the function f of x 
Now, to draw the graph of the function modulus of f of x, we simply take the mirror image of the part below the x-axis with respect to the x-axis. And the part above the x-axis will remain as it is. So this is how we draw the graph of modulus of f of x when the graph of f of x is given to us. Now there are two functions h of x and g of x whose graphs are like this. Now you have to draw the graphs of the functions modulus of h of x and modulus of g of x using the concept we just learned before. Pause your screen and try to draw these graphs. So in both these graphs we first look at the part of the graph below the x-axis and then we take the mirror image of those parts with respect to the x-axis and by doing that we get the graphs of modulus of g of x and modulus of h of x. So friends I hope you clearly understood the modulus function. Now let's solve a simple problem on the modulus function. In this problem there is a function f of x which is equal to 10 divided by 5 minus modulus of x and we have to find the domain of this function. Now we know that this function is undefined when the denominator 5 minus modulus of x is equal to 0. So from the set of all real numbers we have to remove those values of x for which 5 minus modulus of x is equal to 0. Now the next question is when is modulus of x equal to 5? We know that modulus of 5 is equal to 5 and modulus of minus 5 is also equal to 5. So modulus of x will be equal to 5 for x being equal to either 5 or minus 5. So the domain of the function f of x is the set of all real numbers minus the set containing the elements minus 5 comma 5. So friends that's all for today. I hope you understood the modulus function and how to draw its graph. In our next video we will meet with a new concept. As of now let's summarize what we have learned so far. The modulus function is f of x equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and minus x if x is less than 0. The domain of the modulus function is the set of all real numbers. The range of the modulus function is the set of all positive numbers including 0. The modulus function is an even function and its graph is symmetrical with respect to y axis. If f of x graph is given to us and if we have to draw the graph of modulus of f of x then we simply take the mirror image of the graph of f of x which is below the x axis with respect to the x axis.